For the first time it has felt in a long time, the Hoops will not be playing in the League Cup quarter-final this week. Instead, we will watch on as other book their places at Hamden, giving us a free week on the training ground and preparing for Fir Park. However, fans are not happy with what is on the horizon. Of course we will go over this in today's video, whilst also going over all the latest Celtic news from the last 24 hours. But first, make sure you drop a like on this video, and subscribe to the channel for daily Celtic content. First things first, Celtic have confirmed that Anthony Rousen has signed a new long-term contract. A statement on the club's website read, Celtic are delighted to announce that Anthony Rousen has signed a new four-year deal, which will see him remain at the club until 2027. The 24-year-old joined the Celtic Youth Academy at the age of 8, and he worked his way through the ranks, making his first team debut in May 2016, coming on as a substitute in a league game against St. Johnson at McDermott Park. Prior to that, he spent a few months on loan at Queen's Park. He also had subsequent loan spells at Dundee United, and then a season at St. Johnson in the 1920 campaign. Having returned to Paradise, it was the 2021-22 season that he established himself in the first team squad at Celtic and he has gone on to make a total of 90 appearances for the Hoops, scoring 7 goals. Speaking to the official Celtic website after signing his new deal, Anthony Ralston said, I'm absolutely delighted, and it's a great feeling to sign with your boyhood club on a new contract. It never gets old, that feeling of being able to put pen to paper to secure your future where you want to be. Essentially, this is where I want to play my football, and it's another proud moment in my career. I just put my head down every day and worked hard since I signed my last contract two years ago, and it's just been a case of going in, getting work done, doing my best for the team, and helping to bring success. And I felt that, as a team, we managed to do that, and within that, the players get their rewards. So like I say, I'm absolutely delighted to get it done. Celtic manager Brendan Rodgers said, I'm absolutely delighted for Anthony. He was a young player who showed a lot of promise when I first was here. He came into the team and played some good games, and obviously he really kicked on when Ange came in, and had that early spell where he played quite a lot, and you could see him grow from that. So for me and the squad, I'm absolutely delighted. He's a Celtic guy who's came through the system here, and I just think that when you have guys like that in your squad, you always get that extra wee bit out of them. When I spoke to him a little while back, he's so happy to commit himself to Celtic. He loves being here, he loves being a part of the club, and he loves being here, ready to contribute. And I'm very happy he decided to sign on. Celtic travelled to Fir Park on Saturday to take on Motherwell, in what will be a test in the Scottish Premiership tie for the boys. The Steelmen are on a hot run of form, and lost away from home for only the first time in 9 months on Saturday. A 12.30pm kickoff is penciled in for this one, although the match is not live on TV. Inside the UK and Ireland, there is only one way supporters can watch the game if they're not lucky enough to have a ticket. That is via Motherwell, who are offering a £15 pay-per-view service. Celtic TV is showing the game live, but only for fans outside of the UK and Ireland. This is yet another instance of the TV deal that SPFL have not proven to be as useful as it should be. Supporters pay hundreds of pounds across a calendar year for Sky and TNT, expecting matches like this one, where most supporters cannot get along due to ticket availability to be shown live. Unfortunately, however, fans are having to fork out an extra £15 just to watch one match. In the future, here's hoping there are fewer occasions like this one where supporters, the heart and soul of the game, are forced into shelling out their hard-earned cash when they are already paying premiums for numerous subscriptions. The Celtic first team assembled for the annual ritual that is a squad photo. The event has always been more than a mere formality. It's a snapshot literally metaphorically capturing the essence of the squad for that particular season, a reference point for fans and historians alike. This year's photo was a taboo of contrasts and signs of the times at Celtic Park. Among the notable absences was James McCarthy, the Irish midfielder who, despite being on the club's books, finds himself increasingly marginalised. His missing presence in the photograph served as an unspoken statement about his current standing with the squad. However, the photograph wasn't just about who was missing, it was also about who made an appearance. Young talents Daniel Kelly and Rocco Varta, currently playing their trade with the B squad, were invited to join the first team pitcher. Kelly's presence could signal high expectations for the season, while Varta's inclusion could be his first and last of rumours to be off at the end of the season. Most perplexing of all was the absence of Gavin Strachan, a key component of last year's treble winning coaching team. Standing shoulder to shoulder with John Kennedy in the past triumphs, we would assume the coach was not at Lennox Town this morning. Celtic fans have been eagerly awaiting the return of Cameron Carter Vickers to the start in 11, and it seems the wait might soon be over. The American defender has been sidelined due to a hamstring issue, but recent updates suggest that he could be back in action sooner than expected. 
Kartovic has, has been on the road to recovery since undergoing knee surgery over the summer. He made a brief comeback last month featuring the matches against Ross County and Aberdeen. Unfortunately, his return was cut short when he was forced to leave the pitch at the tawdry due to a hamstring problem. Since then, the Hoops faithful have been left wondering when their defensive stalwart will be back to bolster their back line. Brendan Rodgers, ahead of the Celtics' weekend clash to Livingston, revealed that Carter Vickers is set to resume training on the 9th of October. This date conveniently coincides with the next international break, providing a perfect window for the defenders to get back to full fitness. The timing couldn't be better for Celtic. The boys are set to face Kilmarnock at home on the 7th of October and won't be in action again until their trip to Tynecastle to take on Hearts on the 22nd. This gap in fixtures offers a realistic time frame for Carter Vickers to make his much anticipated return. If all goes according to plan, Carter Vickers should also be able to fit in the UEFA Champions League home fixture against Atletico Madrid. His presence would undoubtedly be a massive boost for the team, especially in a match where we're going to have to be at our best defensively. In his absence, Rodgers has had to be creative with his defensive selections. Whilst it's been a challenging period, it's also been an opportunity for some fringe players to prove their worth. Liam Scales, for instance, has stepped up admirably, but there's no denying that the return of Cameron Carter Vickers would both add depth and quality to the squad. So mark your calendar, boys and girls. If all goes well, we could see Carter Vickers back in the green and white hoops by the end of October, and not a moment too soon. His return would be a timely boost for a Celtic side that's eager to make its mark both domestically and in Europe. The forgotten one of Celtic's trio of Japanese signings at the beginning of 2022, Yosuke Iriguchi, is currently on loan back in his homeland with Avispa Fukua. His year with the club is set to come to an end in December. In the J-League in 2023, Iriguchi made 16 appearances, with some recent ones coming out of position. Amid an injury crisis at the club, the 27-year-old has been playing as a striker. He has not scored yet, but has registered a few assists. Iriguchi seems to be relishing the recent alteration. He said, I must admit, I was surprised when I was asked if I could play as a striker, since I've never played there in my career, but I really enjoyed it and managed to provide a couple of assists. I am prepared to play in any position, whether I will turn to midfield or not, I don't know, but I am just enjoying playing as many minutes as possible, just now. The Japan internationalist will return to Parkhead at the end of the calendar year. By then, he will have a lengthy two and a half years remaining on his deal. A future at Celtic seems unlikely for Iriguchi, but one never knows. He never hit the ground running in the green and white, unlike his fellow countrymen he was brought to Glasgow with. There is still time for Iriguchi to turn it around, though, and who knows, maybe he could have reinvent his Celtic career as a striker when he comes back from loan. Celtic fans, what do you make of the blackout this weekend, and what are your thoughts on Rouse and signing a new deal? Let me know down in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. Make sure you drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Remember, we have at least our brand new Celtic t-shirts. We have our Brendan Rodgers Pope t-shirt and our Celtic Ultra t-shirts too. You can find them at CelticPower.com or just go down to the link in the description. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.